once you start using walls, windows and doors and slabs, you're kind of 80% there for a 3D BIM model. So why not push that extra bit and start getting plans and elevations and sections from your model? Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and today we had the fabulous pleasure of hosting yet another masterclass from Vectorworks maestro Jonathan Reeves. Um, Jonathan himself is an award-winning architect, author, and educator. He's the owner and director of Jonathan Reeves Architects, um, which have their offices in Loughborough, Leicestershire. Um, and he also runs JRA Vectorworks, an authorized partner of Vectorworks and UK reseller of Vectorworks software. And he is the author of Revolutionize Your Rendering. Jonathan is, in my opinion, the best Vectorworks trainer out there. His YouTube channel has over 16,500 subscribers with a whopping 340 videos, all of which are dedicated to mastering Vectorworks. There really isn't anybody quite like Jonathan to be able to get the most out of this incredibly powerful platform. So we invited Jonathan in to talk with some of our business of architecture clients, many of whom are Vectorworks users. Uh, many of you know I'm a big fan of Vectorworks. I think it's one of the best bits of software out there for small businesses, um, very versatile. You can use it for literally everything from your um, actual 3D rendering to 2D CAD draw grafting. It's got BIM capabilities. You can even put together presentations and documents inside of it. It's a very, very powerful piece of software. And I always think it's very important for architecture firms to really be investing in their knowledge and know-how of their tools so that they can get the best usage out of them. It amazes me how many people use um, a program like Vectorworks and they've perhaps been using it for the best part of 10 years and they've never moved from 2D into 3D. They've never explored the, the BIM capabilities. Um, I also think it's very interesting for practices who are looking to upgrade and move in to the world of BIM production, um, that Vectorworks should be one of their serious contenders um, for moving over to a new piece of, of software. There's all sorts of uh, competition and challenges with other bits of software like, like Revit. And I think for, again, for small practices, certainly if they're Mac-based, that Vectorworks is the way forward. So this session, Jonathan gave us a demonstration of Vectorworks 2024 and all of its capabilities. Um, we talk about its ability in rendering, real-time rendering, what it can do in-house in the software itself and with other plugins like Enscape and Twinmotion. Really enlightening as always. Highly recommend that if, you've, if you're running Vectorworks in your office that you have some training sessions with Jonathan to make sure that you're getting the most out of it because it will make an enormous difference to the efficiency of your practice. So sit back, relax and enjoy Jonathan Reeves. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Jonathan today is going to give us a bit of an overview on the capabilities of Vectorworks in 2024. He's going to show us how it integrates with things like Enscape and Twinmotion. Um, and then we'll have, you know, we'll, we'll be able to have a, a chance to kind of ask questions as we as we go along relating to anything that you, you've seen. Um, I know, Tizer, we were talking earlier about, you know, what your guys are trying to do in terms of BIM capabilities and do recommend it's well worth having a chat with Jonathan um, probably we'll, after We'll make this. a bit of time for some questions. Absolutely. All being well. <laughs> Great, Great, Ryan. Thank you so much for the introduction. Shall I, shall I fire away and share my screen? And Go and for it. We'll jump in, guys. Um, so let me share my screen. I've got a little presentation I want to share with you and when I look over there it's just me chatting to the the group there um good everyone see my screen okay yeah excellent thank you right well 
I'm going to get far away um, and I'll try and take a few little pauses for breath as we go through. Um, but I've called, called my talk Unleashing Your Creativity and Powering Up Your Productivity, Exploring 3D Workflows with Vectorworks 2024, Twinmotion and Enscape. Um, and obviously within the time scale available, I would like to try and cover some of the uh, 3D capabilities of Vectorworks, obviously not all of them, just touch on a light touch on a few projects and things. I'd also like to talk a little bit about um, some of the exciting features of Twinmotion and finally unveil the power of Enscape, which is now on the Mac for the first time fairly recently, um, and it's been developing at a quite a good rate. So this means we've got um, some amazing sort of 3D modeling capabilities and good rendering in Vectorworks. Then we've got amazing real-time rendering with Twinmotion and then Enscape on top, all on the Mac or Windows. So really, really great capabilities. And, you know, they introduce a lot of different um, options that you can do. And um, look, I quite like trying to throw myself into live demos. Um, always a risky thing, as we were talking about, Ryan, but I'm going to go for it and do some live demos for you and some Q&A as well. So it, just before we yeah, go it, for it. Is, is it worth mentioning as well that this whole presentation is being done not on PowerPoint, not on uh, um, <laughs> Keynote, but on Vectorworks itself. I think that's Absolutely. pretty Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, rather than doing a Keynote, which I love, Keynote's great, you can do lots of flashy effects and things. I thought, you know, as the bulk of my projects are in Vectorworks, you're going to see how amazing Vectorworks is as a presentation tool. And I'm going to demonstrate it by showing you my presentation all in Vectorworks, 100%. So all my slides, everything I've got in Vectorworks here. Okay, so a little bit of background about myself. Um, Ryan did a great introduction, so I don't need to say much more than that. Where am I based? Well, here's the, here's the map of England or Britain. I'm bang in the middle. So good location to get anywhere within two or three hours, which is quite nice. I'm pretty much up to Scotland or down to London. So I've been a practicing architect in the UK for over 20 years, let's call it that. Um, and obviously I've been using Vectorwitz my entire career actually since university back in the day and I won't quite name the date but you know a while ago. I've also been a, a top reseller for Vectorwitz so I've gained a lot of expertise and experience and I've worked with some amazing clients all over the UK and Ireland um, but recently I've kind of started my YouTube channel a few years ago and I've been putting a more effort into that recently. I love making the videos and are great that some of you have seen those already. Um, something I'm really passionate about and it's kind of taken me a bit more like Ryan has a bit more global I would say it's really nice I've got lots of clients all over America Canada Australia um, Germany all over the world really these days so good fun definitely so here we go this is what I'm going to really try and talk about um, I thought I'd kind of put some sort of you know wordiness in here before I get going with the live demoing so, you know, in my view, in the realm of architectural design, the integration of advanced 3D workflows is a transformative force in that it pushes your creativity, collaboration, and your visualization. So for me, those things are really important at the front end, as well as the sort of back end. This talk's probably going to focus a bit more on the front end and the creativity side, not the documentation, the hardcore stuff. I sent to Ryan, perhaps I'll do one of those talks in the future. So we're going to explore how architects can harness the combined power of Vectorworks, Twinmotion and Enscape to enhance your design process, really, to bring your visions to life. So for me, Vectorworks has always served as the foundation of my architectural creativity um, It's offered amazing 3D modeling capabilities, even right from the beginning, you know, right from back in that first time back in university. I was modeling up my thesis project in 3D. So I've always worked in 3D. You know, I rarely work in 2D these days at all. I do, I find it a bit strange, or most architects just drafting in 2D. Um, that's just the way I am these days with Vectorworks. So for me, you can basic design with a lot of precision and efficiency, and you can leverage things like um, project sharing or referencing to also share your information in real time with a wider team. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about these today, but Vectorworks has those capabilities and they're basically um, really quite robust these days. The project sharing in the new Vectorworks is extremely robust. Now, I've always been into 3D and rendering, and I remember back in the day, in fact, I could probably show you one of my renders that took 72 hours. I've got it in the background. Maybe I will just flick onto it briefly. Right, let's see if I've got it here. Yeah, here we go. 
There we go. You know, 72 DPI, 640 by 480, 72 hours of rendering on a Mac, making fan noises while I was trying to sleep in my student bedroom. But I was over the moon with that image and I blew it up to A1 and it looked unbelievable on the wall, I thought at the time. But you know, that's how long things took back in the day. So we've moved a long way. And basically, twin motion. That's, I mean, that, that's that's pretty that's pretty extraordinary image, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from it's 90, a good little from story. From yeah. It's where amazing. I started, and you know, it sort of makes me realise how easy and lucky we are now with the technology, both the hardware, you know, Mac with their M3 Max processors, and all these amazing new kind of processors out there that we have. Um, and I feel like it's just taken a massive leap forward in the last couple of years. So for, for me, I'm really passionate about real time rendering and visualization workflows. So, you know, the icing on the cake is that real time and VR and all that kind of rendering stuff. That's the icing on the cake stuff. But it does mean that you've got to make a very good cake underneath it to get that 3D material. So, you know, for me, the idea of doing a set of drawings in one program and then a 3D model in another program and then rendering in another software doesn't really make a joined up sense at all. I'd rather model and do everything in one software. And if I need that extra oomph for the ray, ray tracing, high quality materials and lighting, I can just plug in Vectorworks uh, to Twinmotion in Enscape. So hopefully that's what I'm gonna try and demo to you guys, see what you think. Okay, so let's get started on the actual presentation. Um, as I say, I am doing all of this in Vectorworks. So, a little slide chair effect for you. I'll tell you how I did that later if you're interested. So the first thing is, um, you'll notice that I've got my new interface here. So I thought I'd actually start off with just talking about Vectorworks 2024 uh, because we've got this brand new interface that just came out. So the couple of things I just want to talk about there uh, briefly. So we've got this new home screen that arrived last year, and now this year we've got the new interface. Just briefly, talk about the home screen. To access my home screen, all I need to do is go up and click on this little home button up in the corner and you'll see it will kind of pop up with a, a brand new window where it greets you with all of the files that you've been working on recently, which is really, really cool, actually. So you can see what I've been up to pretty much all day today, preparing to present to you guys. You can see all the projects I've got here. I really like the way you can view them in list view, see the file size, when you last worked on them. I mean, a killer feature here would be how long you'd worked on them. They should add that for sure. So you can do your fee quotes. That would be really awesome. Um, definitely on the wish list. You can also see that you've got a few kind of what's new and sort of sample files. So this is just Vectorworks being friendly and communicating to you, which is nice. Over here, we've got the learning tab, which is access to the university. The cloud services, which are really good. This is where you've got your iPad and iPhone app, Vectorworks Nomad, um, which many people don't use as much as they should or could. And this is a really good way to access your files on the move and to show people different projects, both in 2D and 3D. So that may be something you're not aware of that you could explore a bit more. A couple of other things like the message center, um, and then of course the customer portal and tech support. But the good thing is guys, it's all in one place. Previously to this, it was sort of darted here and there around to get help or libraries or whatever you needed. So I think it's a really nice improvement. Now, that was actually kind of last year's big improvement. This year's big improvement is the new interface. So if you're not on 2024, you'll kind of notice that basically the icons look a bit different. And we've got this new view bar at the top here. Okay, so just a couple of tips on this. Um, you want to go up to this little cog and you'll notice there's three different modes. So you've got a, like a regular mode, which is quite nice. Um, on Windows, this works quite well, particularly. And basically, if you click on the button here for settings, you can introduce some additional options to your workspace. So I actually turn these off because I don't really feel the need to have my text here because I've already got it up in the menu. Um, so, you know, that's fine. I can actually disable that one. You notice the snapping is also here as well. But if you turn the snapping off, it just reverts to where it was last year down at the bottom. So I'm pretty happy with that. So having done that, I can now spread my workspace across by using a compact mode. And you see it all kind of spreads out really nicely along the top here. Okay. One really cool thing though, is when you are presenting, 
Note this, you can go into auto hide mode. So what that means is it automatically hides itself away for presentation and it only pops up as and when I need it. So when I go up to the top, it pops up. You'll also note that I've got my sidebars here and if I want to, I can basically go up to my window, palettes, palette options, and there's a great little sheet keyboard shortcut here that I've programmed into my workspace, which basically hides my docked palettes. So this guy clears everything away. So when I'm presenting to my clients, which I do a lot via Zoom, you know, rather than live meetings and lots of travel, especially in the pandemic, I can slide out my screens here and basically it only slides out the tools when I need them. Um, to be honest, if you know enough keyboard shortcuts, which is something that I'm quite passionate about teaching, you can almost use Vectorworks in this full screen mode. Um, but for those of you who want to just present in this mode, I think you'll agree it looks really, really nice. And, you know, that means that now when I'm sort of moving around between different views, I've just got this sort of full screen capability. What do you think? It's cool, eh? I think that's nice. The new interface improvements are really, really nice. And I do beta test Vectorworks. I'm on the beta forums and the beta lists, and I see all the hard work that goes behind all of this. And I can tell you it's pretty phenomenal, the amount of refinement and work that went into this. So with a keyboard shortcut, I can just do Command-Alt-Z on my workspace and bring those back at any time. Good. OK, so that was those new features on the home screen and the interface. But I think what that shows you is Vectorworks has this very people centered approach as, as a business. Um, they're very a bit like Apple, I would say, in my view. They want to make the customer experience as good as possible. And that's something that I've always enjoyed as a as a user and a sort of customer of Vectorworks, I guess. OK, so let's jump into something a bit more exciting. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the enhanced 3D modeling and rendering capabilities just in Vectorworks itself. Okay, before we talk about Twinmotion and Enscape for later on. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is basically you see this little bit of text here. This is called a hyperlink. And this is a very cool little gadget that you can find from your dims and notes tools down here. Okay, this little hyperlink object here. And what the hyperlink does is very sensible. It basically just does whatever I ask it to do, opens a web page, opens a document, gives me a QR code which I can scan and link to something. Um, in this case, all I've got it to do is open a document. So when I hold the command key down and click, that's going to open my next file, which is a bit flash, but I, it's nice and convenient for me. So if, if you're not already using hyperlinks, it's something that I would definitely recommend embedding into your drawings. You can imagine lots of uses for this, things like uh, engineer specifications or a website for, you know, a specification for the bathroom, that kind of thing. Anybody using those hyperlinks at all? No? They're pretty cool. Mahmood is. Mahmood would like, you, you know, you haven't know about the Mahmood? Oh, sorry. Uh, I haven't used. Actually, I have a question, but can, should I wait till the end? Let's let's get. Let me go a bit. A little, well, it depends what the question is. <laughs> uh, regarding hyperlinks, is there a way to uh, yeah. publish them and have them carry through in your PDFs? Yes, they will publish as a PDF, but only oh. if it's a web link. Obviously, it can't link to a file that it doesn't have. Mm -hmm. um, so, web links are the one thing that do work on a PDF. They work pretty well. Okay. Great. Okay. So. What I've got here is a very simple little demo project that I created uh, just as part of my, one of my YouTube tutorials, really, just to explore um, something in Vectorworks, and I call it the Vectorworks Cafe. So at the moment, you can see, if I go inside the cafe, we're in white card mode, okay? So the nice thing about this, let me just hide that interface there is I can basically visualize my sort of massing and the idea of the space without getting drawn into materiality, which I think is quite nice. Now, if you do want to replicate this, let me just go up here and put my view bar back on full mode, compact mode. All I need to do is pop into shaded options and you'll see that all I've done in here is basically turn everything off. So I've turned off the textures, the colors, shadows, pretty much everything. And that's where you get this nice white card mode. 
the only thing that I've got going on in there is this ambient occlusion. And you can see what a difference that makes in terms of bringing out the sort of soft shadows. So ambient occlusion, a really great little tip. I love ambient occlusion. And you can play with the strength there. So you can kind of play around with the brightness as well. So that's my first little tip. You know, the white card mode in Vector, it's very easy to achieve, actually. So secondly, I'm going to go to something a bit more conceptual. Um, I've called it cartoon mode. You know, it's very sketchy. It's very loose. You know, if I showed you this as a client, you wouldn't get too bogged down in, oh, is that the finished thing? You know, it's kind of clearly supposed to be conceptual. So the way that I've achieved this is going to my shaded options. You can see I've now turned on uh, textures and colors, a little bit of anti-aliasing, but not shadows just yet. So it's flat, but I have turned on these edges. Okay. And that's where these edges come in and I've made them pretty thick. Okay. Now you can have them at sort of normal level is one and that's how it normally looks quite low. But if you make it a bit thicker, it definitely looks quite conceptual and cartoony. So that's a pretty cool little setting. If I go into my next save view, um, this is basically shaded only. And I think you'll agree it's starting to look a bit more realistic, isn't it? We've turned off the edges. Um, it looks a little bit more realistic, but the rendering isn't quite there yet. Okay. But shaded rendering is super nice. And the advantage with it is, you know, you can just kind of move around, navigate around in real time in your Vectorwitz window, full screen. Very good. Let's go down to the next option, view four. So here we go. We're stepping it up a bit now. We're introducing some lighting and some reflections into Vectorworks. So these are fairly recent developments in the shaded rendering that Vectorworks have. They weren't there a few years ago, so you didn't have these. So we go into shaded options and the big, big difference here is these three. Now these came in with Vectorworks 2023 so if you're not an older version, you won't have these yet, but look at the difference. Um, the biggest one is the object reflections and the environmental reflections makes a, a massive difference. Actually, you can see that shine of the floor and the environmental lighting bouncing around. And then environmental lighting introduces a bit more depth, I would say, into the image. What do you think, guys? It's pretty cool eh? for shaded rendering for a CAD software. Very nice. Yeah, it's good. And you can still navigate around in real time. It wouldn't necessarily work in this rendered mode, but if I want to give you as the clients a bit of an experience, you know, I think you'll agree this will communicate and do the job without me having to go to twin motion or Enscape. Really. This is me just designing and giving you the best experience I can. Okay. So my next view is shaded option with lighting. Okay, so the big difference here is I've actually turned on another layer. Okay, let's bring back my palettes a bit more permanently for a second. Okay, so if I go to la layers, you'll notice that I've just got a layer for lighting there. So without the lighting, it definitely looks a bit darker. Turn the lighting on, really boosts it up. Now, I'm not seeing the lights at the moment, but if I do want to see them, all I need to do is go up to my view bar and what's really nice about the view bar is I can click here. And if I forget what the icons do, I can actually kind of read in here and click and access the drop down from here now, which is really, really cool. So the reason the lighting isn't showing is because I'm in um, always in wireframe, only showing wireframe. So if I go to show in always, you'll see the lighting now. So quite a nice little tip that. So in wireframe, you'll only see it in rendered mode. But as soon as I, I'm just doing a couple of keyboard shortcuts here, guys, I do a lot of those. Command Shift G for rendering, Command Shift W for wireframe. You know, these just basically instantly turn on your rendering on or off. Um, so you can see the difference it makes just with that little bit of extra lighting added in. And I don't know whether you're aware of this, but in Vectorworks, there was a limit on shadows. Okay, that was being removed last year. And there was a limit on lighting and that's been removed this year or the other way around. Okay. So there used to be eight, eight shadows and eight lights. That was the maximum. So if you've ever looked at rendering in Vectorwitz before, and it didn't look as good as you wanted it to, that could have been the reason. Um, but with no limit on shadows and lighting now, 
and things like these environmental reflections. I personally think the rendering for you know actual CAD software is absolutely brilliant. You know, and people go on about SketchUp, but you can't do this in SketchUp. You can only do sketchy stuff in SketchUp. But I think I've proved that you can do that in Vectorworks as well as the realistic stuff as well. So the final thing then I just want to talk about is um, two extra settings or three extra settings. It's called depth of field. So with the depth of field turned on, you can see we've got this nice blurring out of the distance. And you'll find the depth of field settings in the shaded options. And what's really nice in the new interface is all gathered together here now. So we can go to the camera settings and I can just enable or disable my depth of field. And what's really cool is I can click a focal point, you know, focus on that chair or table. And basically it sets the focal distance so that everything else gets a little bit blurred out for me. So pretty cool setting to have. And if I increase it, let me increase it a little bit more. Let's go to three, let's go to two, two meters, two M. Oh, you can definitely see there's some depth of field there, but you know, it actually does work in real time. It's sort of, you know, a little bit blurry and then it kind of clears out as you get further forward. So that's a really nice new impact. Uh, the depth of field gives, gives you this distance and depth range. Very, very cool feature. Finally, we've now got Bloom. Okay, so Bloom is something that gives you a bit of a glowy effect, really. Okay, you can see I can enable Bloom. And basically, it means these, these light sort of bright surfaces just sort of give off almost a bit of light. Now, I've over-egged it to sort of clearly show you, but if you go a bit more subtle, it does actually enhance quite nicely the image. It just sort of lifts it in certain areas. So the Bloom is really, really cool. Um, We've also got a couple of other settings, if you're a photographer in Vectorworks now, called exposure settings. And this is basically where you can adjust the different exposure uh, film speeds as well, and even f-stops as well. So if you're one of those sort of people who love photography, um, this is a really nice aspect to control the brightness and the sort of different characteristics of your image. So guys, what do you think about the new rendering in the latest Vectorworks? Are you sort of pleasantly surprised? Yeah. It's very I mean, nice. It's, it's very nice so that you can actually start to control where the focal point is and create that nice kind of blurred background that you get that concentrates on some of the foreground imagery like you'd get in natural photography. Yeah. You can imagine an elevation with some trees behind the building and you do a nice render and you blur out the trees adequately. So you get that nice blurry sort of backdrop, you know, obviously maybe not in a space like this working as well. Um, but yeah, still do very you, cool. Do you find that people still need to use things like Photoshop on their images now? I mean, like Photoshop, I don't I hardly ever use it for anything to do with CAD now or InDesign. I do all my desktop publishing in Vectorworks and I do most of my image making in Vectorworks now. Okay, the kind of thing that I would have done in Photoshop was add people, but I probably do most of that in Vectorworks or Twinmotion now. Right. Um, I always find the more you do in Photoshop, the more redundant it is when you have to change the image and redo all the work again. Mm -hmm. So I try and totally minimize the Photoshop stuff until the final tickle at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and I use those Photoshop Im images back in Vectorworks. I literally import the PSD file and you'll notice that you can import image files, including PSD, and you can reference them. So that means if the Photoshop oh. document changes, it just updates my Vectorworks drawing or sheet. Oh, very tasty. Okay, so yeah. so basically, you you can work off a whole load of reference files essentially. So you 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 know everything just updates automatically from the CAD file. Yeah, exactly. And it's really nice that you can update PDFs and images as well. Oh, that's a really cool feature. You just don't need InDesign or Photoshop hardly at all. So it's an expensive bit of software to maintain Photoshop. Sorry, Adobe, but you know. Um, right. The final thing is animation. Um, you know, Vectorworks does have quite nice animation built in. So I've just activated a camera. And now I can click uh, play and basically I can just pre-record a little walkthrough animation. Um, and this is something that you can just draw the path or you can set up a bunch of save views. Again, it's not twin motion, it's not Enscape, but in terms of animated capability, it's nice to have definitely. And if you kind of render these out at say 60 FPS, they can be pretty smooth actually. 
They look pretty amazing. So that's the animation camera there as well. Okay, guys, good. Right, I'm going to close that file down and I'm going to jump back into my presentation, if I may, and carry on with my talk. So that was 3D rendering in Vectorworks. Now, I just wanted, if you're interested, I don't have to do this, but if you are interested, I can spend a few minutes showing you some of the actual 3D modeling and do a little live demo. Would anyone like to see that? Yeah, yeah go for it. Thumbs up. And we've got some tower buildings here. Look, here we go. So I'm going to hold down my command key and uh, tell you what, let me just close this big file down later, for later. Command key, click on this one. And let's launch this one here. There we go. Right, cool. Okay, so I'm a bit of a fan of just playing with software. I love playing around with software in my free time, making videos, that sort of thing. And I quite like, you know, having the idea of being a skyscraper architect. It's very unlikely that I'll ever get commissioned to do a skyscraper, Ryan. But I like the idea of having a go and seeing what I can come up with conceptually. So these are just a few sort of weird and wonderful kind of concepts I've kind of had a little bit of a play with over my time. Um, I can't quite remember how to model all of these, to be honest. So I'm just going to go and jump in and model something, but show you a couple of the processes that I would use. So let's just swing around a couple of views. You know, these are very, very quick to model as I'm going to demo. Um, I've also got one here that I was just messing around with the other day. Okay, and this is really cool in that this is using something called an auto hybrid. Okay, so what this does, the auto hybrid means that I can represent the uh, object at a height at any level. So you notice I'm cutting through at 200 uh, meters. So that's right above. So I'm cutting through right above. If I cut through at say 30 meters, it will basically give me a different floor plan. So now, you know, now I'm cutting much more down at this sort of level. So the auto hybrid is really, really cool in that basically let's do 100 meters. That's probably a bit too high. Let's do 50 meters. You can see it basically updates its geometry depending on the height that you're actually telling it to slice through. Um, the auto hybrid is a really useful thing in BIM because if there's something that you can't model with the BIM tools, you know, regular walls, windows, and doors, you do this sort of freeform modeling type effect. And then you say, look, give me an auto hybrid of what this thing would look like above or below at 30 meters. So it means that you can kind of represent things two dimensionally from very complex objects. Uh, it's a really, really important sort of tool in the armory of BIM. Let's go on to my live demo though and see how this works. So I'm gonna turn my page boundary back on. Um, I'm gonna kind of start off with the regular polygon tool, hiding under my polygon tool. I've rearranged my workspace a bit, you can see. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm really not quite sure what I'm gonna model. Let's do 20 meters and let's change into 3D and let's just push and pull 100, 100 meters. Okay, so I've got a little tower building here. Now you notice that when I'm changing view, at the moment Vectorworks is giving me a perspective view. One quite nice new preference that you can change is that you can get it to remember the render mode. Okay, so what this means is I can have separate render modes for primary views. So if I put it into front view, I don't really want that in perspective. Okay, I'd rather have that in orthogonal. Okay, so that's straight on. So what that means is now I've got plan, when I go to front view or right view or back view, I'm straight on. But now in any of the other views, by the way, sorry, I'm just clicking my numerical keypad here to access all these 3D views on the keyboard. So very easy to revolve around. But I really like that new feature of having primary views and secondary views in perspective. I think that's cool. Okay, so here we go. So a couple of tools that I just wanted to show you. You may have missed these. So I'm going to drag out this 3D palette. Now this first tool is called the offset edge tool. And there's a couple of modes on this tool. It's really powerful. You can basically select an edge, move that edge. And what it basically does, it splits the face so that you can now kind of split your face and just push and pull. Okay, so let's do that again. Let's just sort of push and pull. It's coming a bit there and just raise this bit here. So you can see I've kind of sculpted that little building a little bit more in that sense. The second mode of this 
tool is that it takes what they call an edge loop. So this time it offsets the entire edge. Let's do two meters and let's just push that in. Let's go minus two meters in. Okay, so you've been, you can see that I'm able to kind of basically push these surfaces in or out, depending on what I'm looking to do. Basically, it takes the entire edge. Let's bring it down again. Let's do two meters again. This time I'll come out the other way. Let's go two meters outwards. So you can see I can push in or pull out very easy, what I call solid modeling. That's pretty cool. So definitely crack on and have a go with this edge uh, offset edge tool. I keep calling it edge offset, a great little tool. Okay, the next one, um, which you may not have tried, is quite a fun one, is, let me just put it into isometric view for this one, always looks weird after perspective, is the deform tool. And it's pretty powerful, this tool. So this means that you can basically select an object, select a center point, and basically click, and basically you'll see that I can now twist my object as much as I want. Let's just do a 90 degree twist just to create a bit of interest in this weird and wonderful tower building. I'm not sure what I'm creating, but it's fun to do. As well as that, um, the deform tool has a very nice taper mode. Okay, so let me just do something with uh, the push-pull tool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually just push and pull another edge here and just ungroup that one so this one is separate. Okay, that means that I can use the deform mode to basically see if I can kind of taper it in a little bit there, just on the top there. Can you see? So very easy to taper. And then when I'm ready, if I want to, I can select both of those and just add them back as a solid again. So that's pretty cool. So that's the second tool that I would say is one of these unknown tools that you may not know about. Now, the third tool is basically a new feature called the 3D Dragger. Just wanted to demonstrate this. Uh, where's a good spot to demonstrate this? So what I'm gonna do is use the extracting tool and I'm gonna extract a surface. So this allows me to extract any surface from my model. Let's click on this one and just click extract. Now, if the object is flat, which this one is, it's a planar object, you can see. So this is just a polygon. Okay, if I take something a bit more complicated, such as a surface here, this will be a NURBS surface. So when I click extract on that one, you can see that I've actually, I'll give it a slightly different color, a NURBS surface here. And what you're seeing here is a phenomenon called Z fighting, where the two surfaces inhabit the same uh, thickness, if you like, infinitely thin. So sometimes you need to do something called shelling. And the shell tool is pretty amazing. It basically gives something a thickness. You can see I've shelled it by a 150 mil thickness there. So basically that's a separate object, like a piece of cladding now, okay? So really two modes there, the extracting tool, really, really great for just extracting a surface, explore. And then if you do want to give it a thickness, you click and then shell it as well. That means then it's a separate object that you could color up. Uh, let's go to Benjamin Moore Designer Colors and let's go for a nice Spanish red just for the sake of what we're doing. Okay, now the final thing I want to show you is really quite powerful. So if I take uh, this surface here, I can go to my 3D power pack. And this is something that people don't know about much. And I can basically turn this 2D object into a surface with curves. So essentially this is a NURB surface. Now, this means that I can use something called the degree weighting to give it more vertices. And if I now click the reshape tool, you can now see these vertices forming here. Now, what's really cool about these is I can now just push and pull these in any direction using this new thing called the 3D dragger. Okay, so this is absolutely fantastic for what I call organic sort of form modeling. You can basically select one or more vertex and basically just start pulling the cage, if you like, that basically controls those vertices. And this is something that you couldn't really do in Vectorworks before. You know, just dynamically model this sort of subdivision nervy stuff. I think that's pretty cool. Very easy to interact with by selecting. And then you've got this nice 
very clear 3D dragger, don't you think? You can also kind of rotate it to a different angle. So, you know, look, definitely take a bit of skill to master, but I think that this means you can model some incredibly organic forms. And as I say, with things like the shelling command, you can just sort of immediately, let's shell it to, let's make it a bit thicker, let's make it uh, 500 mil so you can kind of see it. You know, you can kind of shell that organic form up there, whatever that might be. Pretty cool. Final thing I want to show you is the texture tool, which is a really nice newish addition. And basically, this allows me to select various textures from my resource manager, which is a wonderful element of Vectorworks, and basically just apply them, not to the whole object necessarily. Let's do it to the whole object. Okay, but you'll see that I can actually apply them to different surfaces. So basically, I can just apply to individual surfaces with this mode. So let's go to another material here on this mode here. Look can see it's pretty easy for me to let's use something a bit clearer can you see how i can just sort of paint these surfaces we're using texturing very very cool so you know this sort of thing was quite difficult before you couldn't really kind of just um do that if, if the object was one solid thing but now you can apply what they call surface overrides to all of these textures these surfaces and this is a very neat feature that not all software has. And you can kind of scale all of that up and, you know, rotate it around as well. There we go, guys. So let me finish off. Dare I do the auto hybrid? Um, I think I'll, I'll leave that one because I've already sort of demoed that. But basically with the auto hybrid, uh, that would, sometimes it doesn't like it if it's too complicated. It might take a little while. So I'm a bit reluctant, but basically that would allow me to cut through the building at certain heights. Of course, the other alternative is using the wonderful clip cube. And with the clip cube, I can also do the same thing in that I can kind of cut through at various heights if I want to as well. Good. Any questions on that, guys? What do you think about some of those weird and wonderful 3D modeling capabilities? They're quite fun. I mean, you know, I know I've just modeled something crazy weird, but you know, this is where your imagination takes you when you're trying to present. And I would recommend giving it a go because you can actually come up with some of these amazing conceptual ideas that you see in DZine and all the magazines all the time. And I'm always thinking, oh, how could I model that in Vectorworks? You know, it's a good way to go. It's definitely fun. Okay, brilliant. So I'm gonna go back to my presentation. How are we doing, Ryan? Okay so we're, far? Yeah, we're great. We're doing well. Good, good. Um, I may have to skip out a couple of things. I'll ask you if you want to have a look at wall closure styles. You may not want to. Let me show you very briefly what this one was about. It was something that Vectorwitz introduced fairly recently where you can have different closure on your walls. So you can have things like splayed reveals, angled reveals. Um, you can see here I've got some radius reveals as well. And what's nice about that is not only does it work really well in plan, you know, and give you a nice level of detailing where I'm returning my plasterboard and returning my external cladding. That wasn't easy to do before, but it is quite straightforward now. What's quite nice is as well, you can right click and basically if you just don't want the wall closure to apply, you can just turn it off. Okay, so that one just won't have the wall closure. So you've got a real flexibility. It used to be all or nothing, it isn't. And now within a wall, when you do the wall closure, um, you actually have numerous styles. I've only got the one set up. What it means is you can have multiple styles set up per wall. So imagine one with a splayed reveal, one with a rounded corner, and one with uh, no, no kind of, you know, just a, maybe a single sided splayed reveal. So you've got complete flexibility over your reveals and what you do both in plan and 3D. And what's nice is you'll notice that it actually kind of works nicely on the inside as well. See how the plasterboard returns on the inside? Um, so you don't get any of that sort of seeing the construction and, uh, inside. Uh, and, and it's easy for you, for you to just export these into other projects and just build up a, a, a kind of standardized CAD library. I know, yeah. in fact, actually, you, you have your own, you have a lot of kind of already standardized CAD libraries. Do they come with Vectorworks or are they things that you need to purchase separately or? 
Yeah, so thank you, Ryan. That's a very good leading question. I appreciate it. So if I pop up my wonderful resource manager, you'll notice I'm a big fan of favorites. And I've, I've developed lots of libraries. I think I've got about 50 now. I think I sell at least 25 of these on the website. So check them out. So I've got kind of libraries of things like details, um, construction details. Uh, but the main stuff is, is like people packs, vehicles, trees. You know, it's kind of everything any architect needs to do the job on a daily basis. You know, you always need hatches, construction hatches, and walls. So if I go into walls, I can right click and open my file. And, and this for me is, you know, this is how I do my walls. I like to have visual libraries where I can go and select the wall type, copy them and bring them into the file. And what I encourage practices to do is set up their own wall types per project. And you can then reference those into multiple projects so if the wall type changes, it can update potentially, you know, 10 different documents very easily by having a centralized project library. But what's really cool about these walls is, you know, there's sort of the simple level of detail, the detail level of detail, you know, they come with a few materials, but all of this can be swapped out. And then at the end of the day, if you want to, all of these styles can just be edited quite flexibly, just adding more components and adjusting things like the thicknesses as well. You can actually build in uh, more than that. You can even build in things like materials and things like U values and other quantities as well. Um, this is something that I train people how to do if required. But yeah, if you want to do the wall closure, you go to this little wall closure inserts here. Can you see? And this is how you can start to do things like the splays. So you can basically just do, let's say 200 mil, you can see it starts to splay. Um, this is just a preview rather than a sort of accurate representation. And as I say, I can now create a new wall closure set if I want to. So this is very powerful. It means that you can be really flexible uh, with the way that windows and doors sit in, in walls. And I, I've not seen other software do this as elegantly as Vectorwitz does. And I'm just amazed that not everybody knows, you know, or uses this feature. So it's pretty cool. I mean, that, I mean, that's been something that's interested me before when I've spoken to people who have been using Vectorworks for a long period of time. They've been using it solely for two-dimensional drawings, and then they're still drafting out details like this rather than having them kind of automated inside of a, a workflow CAD library, yeah. which, is, which is just massively inefficient. And the fact now that you can do it and it's all 3D as well, and that you can build these libraries out yourself, it's just enormous time saving. Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I've, I'll just show you very briefly. I'm, I know we're short of time, but let me see if I've got it. I think I've got it on my my spare layer. I think I had a little link to it here. Is it here? Yeah, basically. No, let me go. Let me go back. Um, so I've got a really nice little file I'll just open up briefly just to show you the flexibility of Doors. So I've got my project files here. Where are we? There we go. Yeah, so I kind of make libraries of lots of things, Ryan. I'm, I'm a big fan of this, and then I can just reuse them. So look, this is so cool in Vectorwitz. Now, in Vectorwitz, you can basically just dynamically resize your openings in 3D, you know, or in front view, or whatever you want to do. Okay, so it's really easy to do. You can then go down to your object info and say, look, I'll make that five panels or six panels or just adjust. Um, so all of it is very interactive. And there's a lot more um, sort of what I call dynamic control than there used to be. So this makes life much easier for things like doors and windows. You know, got a window here, let I can just dynamically squish it in. Previously with Vectorwitz, you used to have to go into dialogues and do a lot of numbers here and there and everywhere. Um, but now I think a lot of it is upfront, sort of more straightforward. Oh, my dialogue's right over there, look. So, you know, previously I would have had to go in and sort of put the width in here for meters and then it would respond. Now I can just drag it and it resizes. Pretty cool, eh, guys, don't you think? I think it's... It's, you can't deny that's user friendly. It just is. I mean, it's just as simple as it can be. Mm -hmm. So um, this is one thing that I do find with Vectorworks. People coming from other software, uh, I won't name names, but you know, the other two BIM softwares that we've talked about often say that 
it's easier and I mean personally I agree definitely for sure yeah so very important to build up a good library of walls windows and doors all those basics of course people trees cars and hatches but all the BIM stuff that's really important and then you can basically just copy and paste it into your next design file and you're away so that's very cool so I'm a big fan of libraries good let's shut that one down as well okay I guess so I guess there's a wider conversation here in about how offices develop their own CAD libraries and and standards and how they should kind of curate those yes yeah. indeed I spend a lot of time when I'm teaching and training um I, I I'm very generous with sharing my libraries but the, the most important thing is I share them and explain to people how they then develop them and expand upon them and make them tailored towards you know North America or Canada or Vancouver obviously English wall types will be different but the concept and principles will be the same so you just need to kind of build those up in a centralized library you can then take them from the centralized library to a project specific library and that means that you then have the benefit of referencing resources into multiple design files so if the wall type changes you change it in the master file and then it will change in 20 different files as you open it without mm -hmm. doing anything, you know, as opposed to going through 20 files and changing the wall type 20 times. So really important to be efficient. Good. Any questions? Should I carry on? I kind of had a question about the referencing of the wall. Like, mm. do you actually do it? How do you reference a wall? So like, because we have kind of a same thing going on, like creating a library, but I don't, I haven't heard about referencing a wall yeah, and yeah. having it updated. Let me show you. Um, um, so, so here I am in another project, I was gonna show you. Um, basically all I do, I go into my libraries, I select my wall, I use my filter and go down to wall styles, select the wall I need, and rather than dragging and dropping or right click and importing, I click reference. Okay. And then when I reference, it basically brings it in as a reference file, but it only brings that resource in. Okay, it's already in there, so I won't reference that particular one. Um, let's see if I can choose something that isn't in there. Uh, let's choose one that definitely isn't in there. Do you want to replace current format? Um, well, I don't know whether I do, but what will happen is it will then appear in italics so the only difference is you'd see the text in italics and when you hover over it it will say referenced resource mm -hmm. so then if the centralized wall type updates it will update this file and any other files required okay. so it's pretty cool it's a good little workflow definitely yeah thanks i i wasn't aware of this one thanks no worries good i just want to show you um this little project briefly it's another little project. I'm quite pleased with this little project. It was a little house um, for an elderly client who wanted to sort of downsize and retire. Essentially a bungalow, single story building in the UK, we call that. Um, but I was quite pleased with, you know, contemporary design and sort of relatively interesting sort of use of materials. And using my save views, you can see that it's quite easy for me to kind of navigate around and get lots of different views, including, you know, inside and sort of you know i think this sort of gives the client quite a nice experience and confidence when they're sort of especially older clients who just didn't understand 2d drawings i'm not being funny but they just didn't get the drawings you know they were in their 80s so they were really impressed by having a walk around in 3d so what i really want to show you was as well as that i've got all of my sheets in the one file so vector is extremely efficient at this um, all the traditional drawings, as well as, you know, some really nice rendered site sections. So that's one thing I think is really important is Vectorworks is brilliant, not just for the architecture, because there's Vectorworks landmark, you know, we have all the site capabilities for site modeling and really nice land landscape and planting. You know, personally, I use the design suite, which features architect landmark and spotlight as well. So that's really cool. But yeah, even without Landmark, you can do some really nice sort of contextual site stuff as well. Okay, the, the real reason I wanted to show this file, though, is something a little bit more technical on the BIM side, was um, something called Graphic Legends. Now, I think this is a bit of a killer feature for 3D workflow. If you're not convinced already by the flashy sort of graphics and the, the renderings, let me show you this. Right, so here is a Graphic Legend of my window schedule. 
Let me just show you how I create that from scratch. So I'm going to delete it. So all I would do is go into my dims and notes, select the graphic legend tool here, go up to the top, choose from a library of graphic legends that Vectors give you, but also I've tweaked and modified and you know made my own. I've got a library of these. So you can see some of the sort of standard ones here. Um, I think it was, which one was it? It was that one. So I just double click to activate that one. And all I do is basically draw across my sheet. And you notice down here, Vectorwitz is doing some operations and it's generating a graphic legend of all the windows in this file. Now, how much time have you ever spent doing manual 2D drafting of doors and window schedules? You know, this is boring days of boring work, isn't it? And if something changes, you've got to redo it all. I mean, I personally hate the boring stuff in architecture. I think there's plenty of that. Uh, you know, I don't know who says they love it, but we all do it. I mean, we've all done it. But for me, this kind of killer feature of having a window schedule is particularly nice. And you'll notice that it's got all the dimensions. And obviously, if I update this on the drawing, these will just immediately update dynamically as well. And they're very, very cool features. So I would definitely encourage you, if you're not working in 3D, to be working in 3D. Even if you don't like all the flashy twin motion and the rendering stuff, you probably want to do it just for the documentation benefits of saving time and being fully coordinated and not making errors. You know, um, so yeah, pretty cool. It's a pretty sophisticated tool. I'm not going to really go into how it works, but basically you can kind of, you know, set this up, really kind of define what it is you want to search in your document. You can pretty much schedule anything. Um, so anything that you've used in Vectorworks, even things like furniture schedules, pretty cool. What do you think, guys? So I think that's a really neat feature of why you should work in 3D alone, even if you don't you know, go for the other stuff. Yeah. That uh, schedule, is it every single instance or you can re you can redefine it so that types of windows are grouped? And Yes, you, have... you can do it by layer, by class. You can do it by style, by type. There's so many different factors. So you can filter out exactly what you want by using multiple options. Um, you can actually filter out by a viewport. If you really want to, you can create a viewport, turn on just certain things, and then filter via viewport, and then it'll only schedule what's in that viewport visible. So lots of flexibility. I was very impressed. This is like the second iteration of um, these came in in 2023. They've been improved quite a bit in terms of user friendliness in 2024. And um, yeah, I found them to be a real benefit for sure. So if you're not using them, get them on the list of something to use, I would say. I've got a um, number of questions there from Rob. Go for it. Hey, Rob. Um, all right, question one, what's the learning curve like? Because this is like super dense. It reminds me of looking at Revit interface. It's like, ah! Yeah, I, I think the learning curve for Vectorworks is good, actually. I, I think that all 3D and BIM software is complex these days. There's no getting over that. But I think it's, it's, and I know that a lot of clients have told me the same, it's the easiest to learn in terms of the approach of 2D to 3D and then BIM. Personally, I agree with that. You know, look, other people might disagree, but I've, I've heard of people going on, you know, five days of intensive Revit training, blowing their brains out. It's quite hard work. So I'm not putting any other software down, but I, I think with Vectorworks, you can kind of move along gently from 2D <clears> to 3D to BIM workflow. So I think, I think yes, everything has a steep learning curve to get to the ultimate. There's so much stuff to learn, but I think it's achievable. Definitely, Rob. Okay. And two, how, yeah. how, how does it compare price-wise to the other big, the other BIM software? Well, I won't talk about that. I, all I'll say is I know Vectorworks is the most cost-effective compared to Archicad and Revit. I won't go into specific prices. Um, okay. I, anyone in the UK, come and talk to me, of course. I'm a reseller. And, you yeah. know, but the good thing with Vectorworks is um, you now have a subscription model, which is fairly low entry cost, I'd say. Um, okay. So you can try it for a few months. And if you didn't get on with it, you could move away. But, you know, you can get a yearly subscription as well. But, yeah, it's definitely the lowest cost compared to Archicad and Revit by a long way. 
hardware requirements. Oh. You can have it running on not a very powerful Mac if you don't need, you know, you can run it on Mac or Windows, which is really nice right. cross platform. Yeah. Revit, you need a bit of a supercomputer, I'll probably say. Right. Anyway. And, and lastly, how does it handle IFC format? Good, yeah, it's, it's really good vector, it's IFC. Um, basically, they've probably pioneered it more so than Autodesk, in my view, because Autodesk quite like the idea of a fairly closed system of everyone using Autodesk and Revit, but vectors have had to be very open and really push the IFC. Um, all of it is really kind of built in, import IFC. Look, you've got a really wide range of import file formats in Vectorworks, all the DWGs, IFC, Revit file, even import native Revit these days, all the image file formats, and then loads of 3D file formats, including SketchUp, come in really well. You know, going the other way, there's even more, even more file formats that you can export as well. So I've never found that I was stuck not being able to get something in or out of Vectorworks in some way or another. It's pretty good for that. Anyway. All right. A uh, question there from Chris as well. About... Oh, sure. Chris, do you want to answer or shall I read it? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, I was wondering how Vectorworks is with more sort of um, more ideational drawings rather than like photorealistic. I can even share a screen. It's a drawing that I had one of my employees did in 2011. Mm -hmm. And everyone I try to get to do a similar drawing now gives me this hyper realistic drawing. And we're looking at a bush you know, in the background rather than understanding the concept. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, it's not letting me share my screen, but I don't know if you have any examples of more like something that replicates, say, a pencil sketch or something like that. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, let me see if I can demo, demo it, something. Maybe. If, you, if you drop the image into the, into the uh, chat yeah, box. Yeah, drop it in the chat and I'll open it up. That's a good idea. Oh, okay. Let me, let me, open, let me open just a quick project here. And... We're almost on to the final sort of few projects I wanted to talk about. Um, okay, so you know, look, this this is a, another nice little project I was privileged to work on for a, an eco home, um, and it was a decent sized sort of single family residence, actually a pretty big house. It ended up in the end. Okay, and you'll see why I'm showing you this because in Vectorworks I've got some really nice renderings, and I've got some nice what I call save views, and I can kind of jump around tell the story to the client of what their building is like. And that really helped sell it to the client as well as to the planners. And if I go onto my sheets, just let that animate. I've also got these, you know, really nice sort of different types of drawings. So, you know, we've got the kind of, those are viewports turned off. I've got this sort of rendered floor plan, which I think is quite sort of conceptual um, and a rendered plan here. There is a nice little sketch filter that you can turn on if you want to. Um, it's not quite the same as SketchUp in, in that sense, but if you go to um, foreground rendering, hidden line, you can also introduce a whole bunch of sort of sketch renderings in here. So yeah, it does have this sort of wiggly wobbliness that you can create, Chris. And that's something that I'm quite keen myself to do at the early stages of designing. I, I don't like to show final renders until I'm ready for them. And I'll often show quite sort of, uh, you know, sketchy stuff as well. Now I won't do it right now because it takes a few minutes to render. I don't want to have to wait for that. But basically, yes, I think you can create a wide range of different styles using the vector it's rendering. Um, we've also got, you know, things like site sections, which are quite nice as well. Um, and now with that new depth of field, which I haven't yet tried on these, that could really help Ryan in terms of fading out those trees in the background. I really like drawings like this, uh, kind of kind of exploded sort of isometric sort of graphics. These are cool, you know, these are easy to achieve just using viewports, basically splitting the model apart in its natural way you've built it in different layers and just representing those. Also uh, love this tool here, you know, this is this is a notes tool and the way this works is basically you go into the call out kind of drag off a note tap into a database potentially so i've got like a database of notes here uh that isn't actually my database but it doesn't matter and you know i add a note onto the drawing and then basically if i do want to i can do place as keynote so it actually adds the note to my keynotes as opposed to on the drawing itself it's a great little tool the keynote tool 
worth checking out that one. That's a big time saver. Good. So the reason I was showing you this is Jonathan, to sort of... Chris has yes. put that image in the chat box there. If you oh, see thanks, it. Chris. Let me see if I can find it in the chat. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to open it up. Yeah, that's nice. This looks like... So how was this created? Do you know what software uh, was created? We, we put it... It was basically in SketchUp and then... This is, this is going back a number of years. It was SketchUp and then taken into a rendering software. And yeah. I think these are two images superimposed, one with a pencil setting in SketchUp, yes. and the other with the more realistic rendering. And the whole yeah. point of the drawing was to, sh to focus on the interior and nothing mm. else. It's an ideational kind of drawing. And um, that's what I'm actually having trouble with the most in my office right now in terms of output, more so yeah, than the production drawings. Let me, let me close this file down because I've got some, um, I'm not going to go into this right now, obviously, but we, we, can, we can have a look at this if we did a bit of training together. But I think, depending on what you want to achieve, let's open this file. Um, something called viewport styles, which is a brand new feature that Beto has introduced. Okay. So here we are in the building model. The previous file we was the site file where I'd reference the model in, the building model in. So I, I quite like keeping my building model and my site separate so that then I can, you know, just kind of represent plans in a different way. You can see also one really nice aspect is this level of detail. So here I've just got this sort of, you know, blacked out poche type effect. Here I've got the detail and here I've got the rendered floor plan again. So I've got these rendered elevations. So what you can do, if you like the look of this style as an office, I'm not saying you do, but if you do, you can create something called a new viewport style. So when I create a new viewport style, basically I can call this elevation. Typed really badly. Okay, but basically what this means is I can set up all the aspects of the viewport in terms of the visibilities of layers and classes, maybe maybe scale, as well as the rendering style. The only thing that I might want to change though, of course, is the actual view itself. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the view itself, but everything else I'll keep the same. I might wanna change the class visibilities as well, but that's okay. So basically what that means is I can use this viewport, if I drag it off and just change the view to a different view, let me just go to a different view. That's the, the back view. You'll notice that I can essentially use the same rendering style or I could click replace and replace it with a different viewport style. So Vectorworks actually do give you quite a few different viewport styles, but these are just examples of the kind of things that you can do. What it means is, what I'm trying to say is, if you can develop a style and off in-house style that you like, then it's easy for everyone in the team to share that style because it's just a resource that you can drag and drop in to your document and apply to a viewport like a plan, a section or an elevation. So this is a bit of a revolutionary new feature. And it means that you can basically save a lot of time. You know, I don't know what these are gonna look like, so I'm not gonna risk it. But if I've created them, I will know what they look like and I'll be happy to use them. Does that make sense? So yeah. in, in fact, it's having different styles, Chris, could be the answer to that. You, you might not get 100% there. You know, there might be one extra little tickle in Photoshop, but if you can get the 95% there, I think that's pretty damn good. So you know, those are the kind of things that you would want to use the viewport styles for. Um, you, you'd play around until you refined it and you cracked it to a point that you're happy. And then you've got it as an office resource that anybody can drag in. You know, you don't know how to, you don't need to know how to create the resource or the style of rendering. You just get one of the office juniors to spend half an hour, or a couple of hours refining it, and then you've got it. So yeah, viewport styles, really, really cool feature. Um, definitely. Okay, let me go back. So that was the viewport styles. All right, so now coming on to the final couple of things, because I know we're, we're gonna run short of time. I just wanted to show you uh, two things. In fact, I might save this one right to the end. And this is my, if it's gonna crash, it will crash on this, okay? Which is the live Enscape demo. So let me close this file down. 
And as we were just on that project... Is this, is this your house, Jonathan? No, no. I wish, I wish, Ryan. That'd be nice. This was done with BBA Architects. Do you remember? Oh, right. Yes. Um, really nice firm in Chicago. That was, that was a project working Ed. with them. Ed, Ed at BBA, who's not here today, but uh, hi, Ed, if you're watching yeah. sometime. And he, he, he doesn't mind. He said I could check this project before. So if I click onto this, so here's the eco home here. Basically, I just want to click onto this. And I just wanted to talk about like where twin motion comes in for a minute. Okay, so you've seen the kind of rendering that I'm getting out of Vectorworks all day long, you know, really quite good in my view for design and BIM software. But look, twin motion just takes it to another level. You know, the rendering is better, you've got animated birds and trees moving in the wind you could see if you're a bit closer you know really nice lighting and just this ability to have unbelievable amounts of landscape and trees and hedges and things that you couldn't dream of in your CAD software okay so you know the amounts of blades of grass vector which just no CAD software could handle that so this is where real-time software comes in you know, you take the model that you've made as a BIM model for your planning and design and documentation, take it into Twin Motion or Enscape, and then add the icing on the cake, you know, the cat to personalize it, the, the movement of the lighting and the shadows during the day. Um, I really love doing this. It's the fun bit. It's really fun. But, you know, I really kind of think this encapsulates the ability to step up to another level of rendering. Don't you think? So, you know, to take that sort of design and within a real time uh, rendering software, these don't take long to create. That's what I'm saying. They used to that 72 hours for that one image, Ryan. Now I can do this in, in minutes um, wow. using, using my Mac or Windows system. So it's pretty cool. Can you navigate in real time? So like yes. just ha have the model at, at this level of, of graphics and just kind of yeah, you, you, you pretty much can actually, I would say these are 4k, you can pretty much get about 90% to this level of quality in real time. You've got to have a good machine. Okay, it's no good having an old machine. It's got to be a really good Apple Silicon or Windows machine. Windows does have a bit of an advantage in that it has path tracing. But even on the Mac now we've got Lumen, which is a real time ray tracing solution, which is pretty cool. So yeah, they're definitely fun to do. Um, I'm not going to render out a twin motion live in front of you. In fact, I normally use my Windows PC because my Mac laptop, you can imagine, is not as powerful as the Windows PC with a big graphics card. Right. So, you know, I really, I really, really enjoy cross-platform work, workflow. But let me come on to my final thing then, which is my Enscape demo. And I will attempt to show you how this works by opening up this wonderful BBA project from Ed. So let's click on this kitchen. All right, so... To begin with, look, this is a bit of a different flavor, really. It's just showing you a little isolated model of a really kind of well, beautifully designed space, I think. And the way this was designed was basically with lots of cabinetry and, you know, really kind of ornate sort of refinements here. You can see I've got these nice views. And I think, again, you know, the lighting looked kind of nice just from Vectorworks. All right, but what I'm going to attempt to do is show you how we can take it to the next level with Enscape. So anyone ready for this? <laughs> we'll go to Enscape. And with Enscape, it now sits on the Mac, uh, as well as Windows, which is awesome. You can plug it into your workspace simply by going up to third party and adding it to your workspace. Once you've downloaded the installer, you can get a trial for this. And basically, look, watch this. Here we go. I'm going to click Enscape and click a single button and launch. Right over here on my other screen, Enscape is now loading in. Give it a second to load the model. Who's used Enscape before out of the group? Anybody? Yeah, it's cool. Todd. Cool. Todd. What do you think, Todd? Do you like it? I think that's a nod. So, yeah, I love it. It's, it's amazing. 
you know, here I am already in Enscape. Now, again, I'm on my Mac, I'm zooming, you know, lots of data flying around. So this isn't the best it can be. I can turn up the notch again to a high level quality, but I think you will see that it's pretty good. I can navigate around in real time. I can spin the camera a little bit. I can use my U key and I key to change that sun coming into the building. That looks pretty nice, doesn't it? What's really cool is I can slide that across. Um, tell you what, bear with me. I'm just going to slide VectorWorks across as well. In fact, if I, if I do that, yeah, that, that could work. That will, whoops. Hopefully dock it halfway. There we go. So this is what I have to do when I'm doing my YouTube because I can only share one, one screen. Okay, so let me do that little trick where I hide those palettes just so we've got two full screens, okay? Now watch this. If I click Synchronize, Vectorworks and Enscape are now synchronized in terms of the view. So what I can do is using my walkthrough tool in Vectorworks on the other screen, I can walk around in Enscape. Now, if I've got a better computer, it will look even better and a bit smoother. And, you know, but I think that's still pretty good. And I can have that on my other big screen as I'm working. I think this is the benefit of Enscape, this real-time navigation. If I go to my different view, I can double click into Vectorworks on the view and that will navigate across into Enscape. I really like that. I think that's a really cool feature. And then vice versa, if I, let's pop this into full screen mode. If I want to pop out my view panel, if I was a new view that I wanted to create, let's say I just come across a bit here and look at that kind of breakfast bar. Yep, yeah, that's nice. I can click create view and what this allows me to do is basically, as well as changing the lighting live, when I'm ready, I can click, uh, what's it telling me here? Synchronize views. Ah, okay, I need Vectorworks in a different form of perspective, but basically if I click create, that will go back to Vectorworks. So we've got this two-way dialogue between my CAD software and my rendering software, which is quite nice. So the final thing then, is let's do a render and this is going to push it. So I'm going to go up to my settings and as well as the, I like the white card renders. Sometimes these are quite nice where you just sort of do that conceptual Chris sort of white cardy type render. And again, you've got the option to maybe have some sort of outliney stuff. So that's quite conceptual, isn't it? That's not quite the same as you showed me, but similar. Let's go back to fully rendered without outlines. And one thing I really like with Enscape that you can't do with Twin Motion. So there are differences. I like both. I really like both. And people always ask me which is better. And one is better for some things and the other is better for another. In a, in a way, you need both tools in the armory. But basically, if I change that to a PNG, you'll notice that I can apply alpha channels and I can also export um, all these different depth channels and things as well. So while we're doing some questions, I thought it'd be kind of fun to render that image out and let it go. So that was the video. Oh, it has a video editor now, which it didn't use to before. Let's get rid of that. Let's just render it. And I just need to choose a default folder. Let me just choose that default folder. Bear with me. Here we go. Enscape kitchen renderings. That'll do. Okay, so that's it. It's going to render out in the background. Um, it's a 4K image, and we're doing not just the um, the rendering of the image itself, but all the depth channels. So I can then take it into Photoshop and using the things like the the ID uh, of the material, just do all this final sort of CGI tweaking. You know, in a bigger office, you're you're Rendering experts will know what we're talking about here. Um, so it makes it much easier to do post adjustment. So looks pretty cool. So I think that's just kind of rendering away. I'm just going to move that to the other screen, guys, while, while it's over there. I mean, I could potentially carry on working. If I open up my Finder, 
I think I'm going to let it. I think I'm just going to let it carry on, Ryan. Brilliant. See if I can show you. Show you in a minute. So far away with some uh, some questions. It's nearly done. It's on fifty six percent. Mahmoud. Uh, for Enscape, once you uh, transfer it over, do you have to edit the materials or like the materials from Vectorworks carry pretty well? Yeah, that's a good question. So I quite like taking the materials as far as I can in Vectorworks, which is a reasonably decent way, you know, because I quite like applying them in Vectorworks and seeing them in my preview of Vectorworks. But you're never going to get all the bump and the refinement and sort of um, diffusion, all the refining characteristics of high-end CGI in Vectorworks, okay? What you can do is you can replace materials. You can also, uh, so that's done now, actually. You can also place objects as well. Hopefully, it's going to come back alive. I told you if it was going to crash, this will, this will be the time. Um, so let's get my palettes up, bring those back. Don't think it's coming back, is it? <laughs> May have suffered that fatal crash I was talking about, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Is is a bit too much with the zooming, but basically yes, you can add um, things like uh, props, you know, glasses of wine, wine bottles, and you can edit the materials as well, which is pretty cool. Okay. So if, how, how how would you suggest for businesses to be made? Like, what what are the things they need to be doing if they're thinking about moving from two D into say the three D capabilities of of Vectorworks? Because again, this is the thing that I, I see a lot with with practices, um, whether they're using Vectorworks or they're using any other software, is that they're often just stuck in like the, the one capability that they know that piece of software to to do. Yeah. Um, and and what's interesting about Vectorworks is that you can do an enormous amount of work and never have to leave Vectorworks. And we're talking about producing videos, films, short snippets, um, presentations, individual graphics. Um, I mean, it's quite it's 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 quite a you know, and BIM software, BIM capabilities as well. What how yeah. how how would you suggest businesses to to start kind of? exploring the, the more capabilities of the software i would suggest um so i was just going to open up those final renders if i if i'm able to i've got them on that screen i would suggest look obviously your time is your time and people are very busy so you've got to kind of invest that time wisely training is obviously designed to invest that time wisely and shortcut months and months of watching videos here there and everywhere like i make a lot of videos yeah please watch please watch as many as you can but you know you'll get snippets from one or the other but what you won't get from a 10 minute video is a workflow of here to here in two or three hours mm -hmm. you know that's where the one-to-one -one bespoke training that i do really pays off and everybody says everything that kind of makes sense do you see what i mean i think i think honestly teaching and training and investment in training is in architectural practice is in my view, not that great. When I was an architect working for big firms, any training from anyone, no, mm -hmm. never invested in me, nothing. I had to do it all myself and time and weekends and evenings. I think things are better now and, and people do invest in their staff, but you can't expect them to be twice as productive if you don't invest in them. It's like Tesla. He builds a new machine to make his Teslas and he's twice as productive and he produces twice as many and makes twice as much mm -hmm. profit. So yeah, I think it's I think it's about investment, and it's, I think it's interesting. So when I when I was at RSHP, they would yeah. they would they were very heavy on the training for MicroStation at the time, yeah. And we would you'd have to do every employee that started the company would have to do three months of training with the MicroStation team, and they had they had two microstation trainers who would come in and would, they weren't there they were both part time, but you know it was essentially they had one full time microstation trainer yeah and they would, sure they, they would train on individual projects they would train um individual team members when they first came into the into the business to make sure that all standards were being done exactly the same yeah and whilst it was annoying at the first for the first few months it it's just meant that it was just yeah it, i mean it was it was very very slick and very very yeah. efficient 
I think that sounds like a rarity to me. It was. <laughs> Everybody knows how much training they've had in, in different firms as they work their way up to becoming partners. And I think we'll all have different experiences. But um, my, my experience was virtually nothing. I mean, you know, people just saying, get on with it. So here's a computer, you know. So I had to be self-taught. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at self-teaching. That's what I like doing. But not everybody is. And other people really need mentoring and pushing along. So I think if you're doing 2D, there's a number of things you can do to dramatically improve your 2D workflow, referencing and resource management, libraries, um, project sharing, uh, using walls, windows and doors, even if you're using 2D, much faster than drafting lines and shapes. But then once you start using walls, windows and doors and slabs, you're kind of 80% there for a 3D BIM model. So why not push that extra bit and start getting plans and elevations and sections from your model, which are all coordinated. And I don't think anybody would disagree that it makes sense. You know, they might disagree it's too hard or they just can't do it or the learning curve's too high. But ultimately, all the BIM software, Revit, Archicad and Vectorworks can do this stuff. Um, so your choice of tool is your choice of tool. But, you know, if you are using a tool, don't jump ship to another tool that's even harder to learn. Make the most of the one you have. And um, before you jump ship, you know, the, you'd have to have a good reason for not using Vectorworks BIM. If you haven't explored 3D and BIM, that, BIM in Vectorworks, then I would say that's the next natural step from drafting. Very enjoyable as well. It really is enjoyable. Here, by the way, is the rendering that we did in Enscape. So what do you think, guys? It looks cool. And better than, you've also, better than 72 hours. Yeah, not bad. And, and, you know, you've also got these other sort of channels like the ID and the material ID as well, which is cool because that means that you can then tweak the shadows, tweak the reflections, all that sort of stuff. Beautiful, beautiful light. Yes, very nice. Very nice lighting. You know, look, people always ask me for a summary of what's better in Scape or Twin Motion. I'm not going to go into that today, but I really like both and you should definitely use both. They both have massive advantages for certain workflows. Maybe that's a whole nother, whole nother webinar, Ryan. You know, real time render. There's another new block, a kid on the block, D5 render, which is also pretty amazing. Um, so there are, you know, a few choices now. There's three, but only one on the Mac, Twin Motion. I don't know, two, Enscape. But Enscape isn't completely fully featured yet, like Twin Motion is, but mm -hmm. it's coming. It's getting there. I think it will get there. So, yeah, it's good to see it opening up. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think Fair it's a pushing the 3d rendering as well but you know it's just not doesn't need to be real time and you don't need people walking around in your back to its model <laughs> yeah absolutely wonderful and that's a wrap and one more thing if you haven't already please do head on over to itunes or spotify and leave us a review we'd love to read your name out here on the show and we'd love to get your feedback and we'd love to hear what it is that you'd like to see more of and what you love about the show already. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.